Hey, g'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How, and we're into, we're into part three of our ultimate DIY, or my ultimate anyway, DIY storage solution for the back of the D-Max. If you haven't checked out the StoreMod solution that I've been prototyping, which is this guy, which is bolted to these guys to give us all of our ute storage and what have you, go and check that video out. And then part two was the overview video, which was running through all the bits and bobs that we're gonna be jamming into the 12 volt end of our storage box. In this video though, it's all about installation. So it's about getting all of that into here. So without further ado, let's get started. Now the first thing we're gonna tackle is our eco-worthy, this is sort of the brains of the operation or at least uh, the stomach of the operation, I guess you could probably say, being that it's the storage of all the fuel. That's a weird analogy, I know, but it's what I'm gonna, it's what I'm rolling with. So I've got in here some space that's ready to go for this to sit down on its side. So it's gonna slot in there just like that. This top plate is super solid. Then how we're gonna clamp it into place is using another bit of our channel here to then bolt off these two strong sections there as well. So that fits perfectly down the end there where we can clamp it into place. And here we go, we are all installed. The battery is not going anywhere. We've got extra brace bar across the top here that jams it into position. It does have some breather holes down the sides as well as underneath. So that's gonna be great to allow some airflow to come up and out our eventual exhaust up the front here. These are designed to run up to our 55 degree mark for our charge and our discharge there as well, which, which is quite hot. You, you still wanna get some good airflow flowing around it. So we're gonna check that box, which is good. The next thing we wanna move on to is starting to work out where we're gonna put everything. We'll start with our aux beam, our switch panel here. So what we're gonna to wanna to get out of here, the main part is this guy, and also then our big, our big fuse for, for it itself. So next part, what we'll do is we'll work out where this stuff's gonna go, what's gonna fit best, so we can start putting it into place. And here we go, so I've laid everything out. We're going to use the side of our battery casing here as a little bit of a shelf. But basically what we've got going on here, we have our POS terminal here and a negative here. So the plan will be to run our big negative cable out and down the bottom to our shunt, because that's gonna live in here likely. We'll get that in a sec. And the other one is our positive cable here, which will run around to the big fuse, the 60 amp fuse that came with, so that that will then come out down to our positive terminal that lives just down here. That brings us to our shunt. So with our Victron BMV 712, this is the big shunt unit that we wanna run everything through. This was really invaluable with our old 12 volt setup the one in our old box over there. This was fantastic because we could get the full read. We knew exactly what was going on, what the temperature was in the box, the whole box and dice. So I'll get cracking on this now and I'll see you in just a sec. And here we go, all sorted. So we've got everything all in place. We're able to mount our Victron unit here, the BMV 712. That's our big 500 amp shunt that'll read everything. We'll then have our little front plate, this guy, uh, around that way, which will sit on the front. So it'll give us live readings on what's going on in the overall system, but as well as that on our app as well, which is pretty cool. We're all good to go there. We're on to the next step. Now for us, we'll just get this stuff out of the way. The next step for us is going to be our compressor. First things first though, we need to get this guy into place. It's gonna live, we've got an extra little rib just down there in the middle. We're gonna sit this guy down in there because what we're gonna be able to do is use each of those two ribs to, to mount it to the skeleton of the box overall. So it's super, super strong in there and not going anywhere. We're ultimately gonna have our air input here and then out on the other side. So the big fan on the other side of the compressor, we have one of these for one side, one of these for the other. The fan that we're gonna run we're gonna upcycle this guy in here, which is a big brushless uh, server fan, actually, a waterproof server fan. So that's gonna go in here, and that'll be switchable through our aux beam little switch panel. So we'll be able to flick that on and off, but then also the, the Victron relay, we'll be able to kick that in because this little blue thing in here is a temperature sensor. So the cool thing about that, within the app you can set, I've had this set to 40 degrees, so as soon as all of this ambient gets over 40, boom, it'll flick on our fan to run automatically. But then also, when we're running our compressor, we'll have uh, this guy mounted just in there like that, nice and squared up, so it'll suck our cool air in, 
and uh, and then be able to blast it off the end of the fan here, straight out outside of the box. So right, so progress update. We have our fan all nice and installed there, looking looking pretty good. And then over on the back side, we have our little vent. So we're going to suck in from there and blow out there. So the next step, I'm going to whip off uh, this panel and the one on the other side, and we'll bolt our compressor into its final resting place and then move on to our next part. We've only really got three things left before we move on to our front plate. We have our waterproof little power strip that is going to live straight down the side here. That's what this void is down into here. So that's going to sit up the top here and then down she goes down through there. So that one's easy to do. From here I reckon we move on to the BCDC. So this is what's going to take care of our solar input for uh, that guy over there but then also giving us our charge from our uh, main battery that lives in the front of the DMAX. So as far as uh, this one goes, it's going to live down in here. I'm sort of jamming in there so you get the idea, but it's, it's gonna live down in there. So I'm gonna use some more of our skeleton here to bolt this one into place there as well. The last part is our inverter. Now the thing with this guy is we just need to orient in the right way. We have a handy dandy slot down the bottom there, and that is perfect to fit exactly this. We have exhaust fans one side with our cabling, plenty of length with our cables, so no drums there, and then our plugs on the other side. So we don't want exhaust that way because there's nothing to exhaust it to. We are gonna put a little inlet vent just here, similar to what we did at the back of the compressor, and we're gonna orient it in, in that way. So that should slot straight in there. A little bit like that and then that way if we shimmy it down this way a little bit we'll have enough room inside here to plug our plug in which is this guy so we can plug that in we can then run our wiring we've got plenty of space behind there to run our wiring up and then through up here but then also wiring on the sides here once again up to the battery in the shunt so that's our our final final bit of gear that we need to install so enough jibber jabber i'll get this all bolted up and then we can move on to the wiring. It is pretty tight, it is pretty tight, but it's uh, it's coming along, it's, it's gonna work fine. I have also got this guy ready to go. This is what we're gonna connect into the box. So I wanted to have a nice flush unit that's gonna sit in there just like that. We have our Anderson plug in the bottom here. That's what's gonna connect to our existing input for the BCDC. That uh, we used to run on that, so that part's all done. And then we have our little trailer connector here, which is a seven pin. And then that is gonna be running all of our accessories on top of our roof rack. So all our lighting, the three lights there, and also our solar. So as far as parts goes, that's it. We've got nothing left over here. We, other, well, I mean, other than this guy. The rest is all of our remote stuff. So that's where we need to run all of this, these bits and bobs all the way through to our front panel. So how I'm gonna do that, if we imagine this is our little front panel here and it's gonna be all connected, we need to get everything here. I am always gonna be running one, two, and three all together. So I'm never gonna be pulling them apart. So how I'm gonna get the wires from here through to our little control panel at the front is I'm gonna run some hard pipe. I've got some hard PVC pipe, a little 40 mils, little, uh, little hole saw there, hole saw, and hole saw here in the guts. That way I can run a little uh, conduit from here all the way down to the front so that I've got a nice protected section for all of the wiring. So you can imagine right down the base there will be some hard conduit. So as you're putting gear in and that sort of stuff, it's not gonna muck up or you know damage any of the wires or anything like that. I'll get cracking on doing the boring stuff. I'll get all the wiring all done and then I'll come back to you in just a sec and show you what that looks like all done. And here we go, we are all done. I've just sort of temporary mounted our front command plate here. Inside it is an absolute mess. This Victron cable in particular is the longest thing known to man. So you'll see in the third and final video in our ultimate 12 volt box series. You'll see what this looks like. We're gonna have a false wall in here just to sort of have all of this tidied up and sitting in there. So you've still got a clean storage tub there. The back wall is all in, vent all in place. We've got it tied down. And then from a wiring perspective, we've got everything all tidied up here. Here's our bit of conduit in here, worked an absolute treat. We've kept everything away from the hot part of the compressor as you can see down in there. 
Similarly, this actually has a little bit more room from the BCDC than the old storage box there. So pretty happy with that. The Oxbeam side of things just made it running everything really easy because I could run straight from the front, the right size cabling for all of our switches and chargers and everything there, for example, just literally run the cable straight through, ferrule crimp it down this end, connect it up, and then do the same down this end as well. So very, very easy and it all worked like a treat. And here we go, we are all done. I am absolutely stoked with how this has come together. It is a looking absolute treat. We've got everything all sewn together now, so it is acting as a single unit. Currently wrapped it only in the middle there, just so you can get a bit of an idea from the store mod side of things, what it looks like if you do wrap to coat the whole thing. I am going to be wrap to coating everything else. So that's it for part two of my ultimate 12 volt setup using the store mod triple box setup. Let me know what you think. I'm interested in your feedback. Is there anything you would do differently or maybe add or delete parts? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm interested in what your thoughts are. Now part three is the final installment of the build here. We're gonna be having it located in the back of the D-Max, all installed, ready to go. I'll show you how I attach it to the tub and also we'll do a full overview of everything that's going on here and do a, a sort of a real life test of each of these so we can see how it all works. Of course, big thank you to the patrons of Video Show Me How. As always, really appreciate your continued support. But other than that, guys, as always, I hope that you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.